Welcome back everybody to another episode of Limon Crochets. I am very motivated. I have some new yarns to show you all and February is coming up. So I figured I would try and start on some February projects. Luckily for me, I got some of the new monthly colorways for February from Knitted Wit. And I just wanted to sit down and unwind the yarn first because you know, we gotta get some of that yarn goodies and stuff. So go ahead, take a seat, enjoy this video, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you my planned Valentine's Day garment. Now, if you are new here in this channel, what I like to do from time to time is just to unwind the yarn here on camera with you and dissect the colorways as I'm winding it. So that way you guys can get a little bit of yarn goody viewing pleasure beforehand. Cause I know we all like to look at the skeins when well, before we actually wind them. And I know we also enjoy winding them and seeing how the difference between what it looks like as a skein and what it looks like as a cape Sometimes the difference is just, and it's like, whoa, and it changes the plan. We have the February Her Story colorway here. This is one of the national parks from this past summer. And this one has just been a fairy floss mohair that um, she's had at the yarn shop. And I finally pulled the trigger because I got really motivated seeing these three together. Also, if you are new here, welcome to Limon Crochets. I am Gerardo Limon. I am a crochet designer and yarn influencer here in Chicago, Illinois. And I make videos on unboxings, reviews, tutorials, and sometimes just vlogs of my cooking or just shenanigans that I do on my personal life. I am currently in school in a paralegal program, hoping to become a lawyer in the future. So hi, future me, if you see this. <laughs> uh, just, just know that all of your support, don't forget to give this video a like and a thumbs up. And don't forget to leave a comment. Comments help videos so much and also watching the ads. So if you watch the advertisements throughout this video, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. All of your support is to help me provide high quality content for you all. And every now and then, you know, to help pay off a book or two <laughs> for school. So thank you so much to all of you guys for all the members. If you are interested in joining, there is a join button there and it'll tell you that all the extra goodies that are coming up. So the first one that we have here is Truth Teller, which is the monthly colorway from Knitted Wit. And the theming behind this year of the monthly Her Story colorways is female authors. So there it is unwound. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Now I will say pinks is a new color that I am finally coming to terms with and developing a friendship with. It is something that, you know, I realize I can actually pull off and play with. But if you notice, check that out. This has the, now this purple was actually quite popular last summer with a bunch of dyers. It's almost like a neon royal purple with an undertone of pink. And then it goes into this cranberry magenta pink fusion. So the way, I mean, I have my ring light on. So whatever you see here is true to color. And from just keeping it up and holding it, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. So I'm quite interested to see how it's going to play out. See how here we have that purple uh, sticking out and then we have the pink right underneath it. That means, you know, it's not really that uniform. But that just gives you some crazy coloring and non-pooling effect going on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the winder and we're going to see what it's going to look like as a cake. So what I like to do on this channel is to show you guys what this looks like close up so we can actually dissect this colorway. So let me go ahead and zoom in and give you guys a little more of a close up. There we go. So if you notice, it's a real, it's pink, you know, but the best way I can describe it is take pastel bubblegum pink and add an undertone of purple to it and then add an undertone of maroon to it. So it's almost like a maroon pink, which I'm not too upset about because it's not, it doesn't seem too obnoxious and it's just, you know, you get those little... I didn't even notice and there's some flecks of blue in there yeah there's actual blue in there but i really really love this purple that it has here so all right i'm gonna go ahead and wind it and i'll bring you guys right back all right the cake is done let's go ahead and put the tag in the middle and voila big reveal check that out let's see if i can zoom in a little bit more there you go now you can get that detail <gasps> Ooh, it's 
not really like pink. It's maroon pink. So like if you pastel maroon with a little bit of bubblegum pink underneath it, really, really cool. And that purple in there is just so nice. So let's go ahead. That's the first one. Now, let me just preface a little bit. When I had these three next to each other side by side, the idea for me was that I would use, because I've done a project where I've had like a rainbow next to a pink. It's over there, actually. Let me get it. So I've already done a cowl. This is using Stitch Together Studio. And you can kind of see it's not this, it's not as bright as this rainbow mohair. But I did put it next to a pink already, and that's more of a cranberry. And the green, which is kind of similar, but not really. Oh, excuse me, I had a burp. So I know what rainbow next to pink looks like, and I kind of wanted to flip it around this time and put the rainbow next to the green and then alternate between stripes of the green and the pink to do kind of like a pullover of what I'm wearing. That's going to be the idea because I figured this rainbow is going to be popping and I don't want it next to the pink to copy that cape that I just brought up. I wanted to mute it with the green and then use this pink to kind of like bring it all together. Now, I don't know what kind of stitches I'm gonna use yet. Hopefully with three skeins, I'm able to do kind of like a t-shirt, hopefully, or three quarter sleeve type of shirt type of thing. So we'll see, it's gonna be made um, in square format. So I'm gonna do two panels, one in the front, one in the back, and then work on the arms later. So that's the idea, okay? So just keep that in mind as I'm doing it. Now let's go ahead and work up sock number two. So this one is called Glen Canyon National Recreation at Area. And it, there's some videos on my channel already where I unboxed all of the National Park colorways this past summer. This was one of them and I saved it until I thought I would be able to use it. And it is a beautiful combination of pine greens, moss greens, navy blues and that cream that like army beige you know what i'm talking about that's in there and that's on their uniform sometimes so let's go ahead and unwind it Woo! and let's go ahead and dissect this a little bit so if i pull it open i can kind of see where she poured it so i like to open it up in my arms so i can kind of see where it was probably laid flat on the pan so I can kind of get an idea of how she like mixed the colorways together and it is just so precise. I love how she uses the white base of the yarn as kind of like a background so it almost looks like the color is overlaid on top of the base which gives it a very nice like dirty and very nice variegated wacky uncontrolled look to it. It looks really cool. I like that brown. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the winder and then we're gonna dissect it a little bit further. Okay, let me bring you in and let's zoom in on that yarn. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. There we go. So check that out. Like it is the way she just like mixes those two colorways right next to each other. Like that almost looks burnt, but it's not burnt. And this, this is like my favorite shade of brown. It's almost like a honey, honey brown, if that makes sense brown with a honey undertone and then we get to the greens and oh the way that blue does not like fade into that green it's just it's it just the colors just stricken into that base so nicely oh we got some toasted marshmallow look here and then yeah so the pine green is oh, I'm a sucker for pine green so I'm really glad that it looks like that oh sorry that's some of the mohair from the rainbow but yeah so a great blend of oh and this are you kidding me? That cream and the blue together. Ooh, so good. So yeah, that's really, this is the army base that I was talking about, like the army beige. Really, really cool. Very earthy tone. Very, you know, it's earth tone and neutral, uh, cool tone and earth tone. So pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and wind this up and I'll show you guys what it looks like in cake format. Great. It is done. No, I just pulled my hair, scratching my head. All right, it is done. Let's put the tag in the middle and put it in the center. Ooh, let's zoom in a little bit. Oh my God, oh my God, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. You know, sometimes when you have these skeins and they come out like this, you just don't want to use them. 
You know what I mean? If you have a yarn that's like that, that you just regret caking up or after you cake it up, you just tell yourself, nope, I'm not going to use it. Let me know in the comments down below. This one is definitely one of them. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. It like, when I put it this way, that's a great plaid. Could you imagine a t-shirt like that? But like this, mwah, chef's kiss. So just to recap, we have these two together. Look at that. Are you guys seeing the idea that I have? Huh? All right, now we got the last one, which is this rainbow. And if I put it next to this green, look at that, look at that. You know, like it mutes the rainbow down to a degree where it's very workable. So very excited. Let's go ahead and wind this rainbow. So this rainbow is technically a her story in fairy floss. It's her fairy floss base, which is a size zero technically, but it's fine. You can use the regular hook size, which I will be using a D hook, C hook, A, B, C, D, a C hook. I'll be using a D hook for all of these yarns. However, usually when I use her fairy floss or any mohair, I do go down to a zero steel hook. Uh, this is 72% kid hair, kid mohair, 20% silk, 50 grams, 459 yards, radioactive rainbow. I believe this was inspired by Madame Marie Curie. Oh, I am a sucker for mohair now. And using a zero hook is how I achieved this look with this one, which is not stretchy and you get that play on color from far away. Very interested to see how this is gonna look with me going up a size. Let's open this up. Ooh, that is so nice. The saturation, the saturation on this colorway. It is, it is crazy. It is crazy bright. It is crazy. All right, so I'm assuming she, let me line it up. Pinks with pinks, blues with blues, greens with greens. So I'm assuming she dyed it somewhat like this. Oh, that is so radioactive. That's really, really cool. And it's super soft too. Now the hair will go all over the place when I wind it, which is totally fine. But that is just, that is insane. Like that part right there, you see that? That splotchy green part right here? It's just, how do you, how do you achieve that? How do you just achieve this color without bleeding? How do you do it? I don't know. Laura Jean, tell me your secrets, please. I just wanted to bring to your attention, when you use mohair, don't be scared. It will melt into each other. So like if you're pulling it, you can kind of see you're pulling like the skein with it a little bit. Don't worry about it. It's totally natural. As long as you're not like, using your two fingers because what I'm going to be doing is just putting this hook here and then winding it. It's not going to remove the hairs at all from your skein and you also don't want to pull too hard. It's not going to rip or anything but you do want to maintain the integrity of the yarn. So just a little heads up if you're using mohair, don't fret and try not to breathe too close to it because it'll make you sneeze. Whoa! So this is going to look really cool. I try not to put too much pressure on it so it could be nice and fluffy and you can see it, but check that out. So this is the mohair. Can't really see what it looks like like that, but if I turn it sideways, ooh, you get a nice, beautiful rainbow plaid moment going on. Very delicious, very delicious. So let's go ahead and recap what we have here. Okay, so we're using currently these three skeins and well, let me put in the order that I want to use them in. We're going to be using them in this particular order, okay? So rainbow is going to go on top, and then we're going to get some of that green and then stripe it with the pink for the bottom half, okay? Now the plan, now let's talk about how we're going to be creating this garment, but so far this is what it's going to be looking like, okay? Got it? Okay, so now for the plan. I'm wearing this garment for a particular reason, and it's because you know, when you do garments in the round, if you're going to do them in the round, it's better to do them fitted. So that way you get a nice, clean, crisp lines on your body. And if you're going to do something that's a little bit oversized, I would recommend going the square route. So this one, there's two pan four panels, one, two, front and back. And then the sleeves are actually panels themselves and you just close them on the bottom. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do four squares including for the arms. So 
one panel in the front, one panel in the back, and then two squares to close at the center for the arms. If I'm gonna use another color for the border, not quite sure yet. I'll figure that out when I get there, but for right now, that's gonna be the idea. So in total, we have about 1,200, 1,300 yards of yarn. And even though this is a zero, it's gonna take up the exact same amount because I'm using the same hook. Or I might go down. I'll let you know as I'm working on it. I'm gonna swatch one panel first and see what that looks like since I got pretty good at frogging mohair. And I'll bring you guys right back, okay? So for right now, this is the plan, okay? You got it? If you have any questions or if you like something about this, leave it in the comments down below. And give me your opinion. Would you switch the pink or would you switch the green? Put a comment now so that way when you watch the rest of the video, you'll be able to see if you got it right or how it looks. Welcome back, everybody. Yes, I cut my hair. Uh, it has been about a day and a half since I was working on this and I wanted to bring you in. So technically what I did was I did a swatch of one of the panels trying to figure out how big I want the panel to be. And in this case, I don't know if it pops up on camera, but technically I made it the length of this green here. And then I realized it wasn't really long enough when I compared it to my granny square sweater to see the looseness of it, because I do want it to be a little oversized. And so what I did was I ended up adding more to the border, which is why it extends to the sides here. And then like going one, two, three, and then I just added to the left and the right until I was comfortable with the width of it because technically I was making it taller by adding more on the upper level. So now I know I'm pretty comfortable with how wide this is. So now all I really have to do at this point is to continue from the top and begin the second panel already attached to this panel. And since I have the length, uh, since I have the width comfortable of what I want, I really don't have to do what I did back here. I can just continue the panel and just leave this section off for the neckline. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do the second panel right now. I have this much left of the mohair, which should be fine, and relatively good amounts of yarn for the lower body half of it. I'm not quite sure how long the sleeves are gonna be at this point, but we shall see when I finish the second panel. But I just wanted to bring you guys here an idea of how sometimes I have to swatch my panels if I undermeasure. You can always add on, but you can't really take off unless you want to frog the whole thing. And I really didn't want to do that. So I'm just going to continue from the corner up here, begin the second panel, and use the width of this to go down. So and I did this like little fade effect down here. So that way the pink and the green are kind of like playing into each other. Oh my god. Frogging mohair is so tedious, but it is possible. So I'm going to use some stitch markers because technically I've counted this four times and I cannot get the mental math right. I think I need to do 28 on the sides and then 35 in the middle, but every time I count out both sides, it doesn't come out really even. So right now I'm just frogging my mohair. Be careful not to rip it and then I will let you guys know the final dimensions are so you can do this on your own without having to swatch like I did on one of these panels scooch, scooch, scooch. Okay. Cool, cool. all right let me go get a couple stitch markers and then I'll bring you guys back okay got my stitch markers here so 30 on the left 30 on the right and I just counted 38 in the middle for the neckline you can always reduce afterwards when you go back and do the actual collar so it's always good to do it bigger than smaller good morning i wanted to bring you guys in for an update because i'm about to start on the sleeves and so i closed up both sides okay there's the back there's the front closed them up using a half double slip stitch on the sides you can you can't even tell it's with the green yarn so we got a nice little seamless thing and then with the leftover green I used the rest of the green up I added this turtleneck to it because I figured that green would break apart that rainbow really really nicely up on the upper body so that's where I'm at right now I'm about to start on the sleeves which is what's left of the yarn which is this pink and I'm just gonna do exactly what I did with the turtleneck which is all triple crochet and for those who are curious when I closed up the 
neckline I did four three stitches one two three and then I skipped one stitch on the fourth so that way there's a little decrease on it and then I just continued up normally so that way it's kind of loose but also kind not too tight when you're wearing it all right so I'm gonna do the same thing on the sleeves and I will bring you guys right back Final notes, this was using three skeins of yarn. We got one of the mohair, two of the green, and three of the pink. Now I will say I'm going to frog the sleeves and I kind of measured already, I can actually decrease it by 20 stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both sides and that should give me a little bit more length so it should actually reach down to my elbows after I do that. And you could actually wear this in any direction that you want, but I chose this way because it kind of looks better when the upper body part is a little bit shorter which is a mental note now that I know when I recreate this design but I kind of like how it's bigger in the back it kind of gives you a little bit more room to work with in terms of proportions to your body and you know the main part of it is to keep your upper chest warm so this mohair really is doing the job and we have this actually goes all the way up to here if I really wanted to but I just like to keep it nice and scrunched up for a little high fashion moment and yeah so I really highly recommend this yarn if you guys are interested in doing it. And we got the February colorway here. We have the National Parks here. And this was a Her Story from last year in mohair. So I'll be putting links in the description box below if you are interested in purchasing it from the Chicago yarn shop that I bought it from. And if you do, just let them know that I sent them your way. But thank you guys so much. Make sure you leave a comment down below as to which part of this garment you actually enjoy the most. Do you like the sleeves? Do you like the yoke? Do you like the body and just a little so you guys can see how it works normally I start off with four spaces in between then I go down to three then two and then I just let it play out and then I just do reversal one two three and then let it play out all right you guys so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video